to you about uh, PostgreSQL and PostGIS, and especially today, uh, PostgreSQL, uh, PostgreSQL features. Uh, who of you, raise your hand if you use PostgreSQL? Well, that's a lot. And PostGIS? <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> okay, so I will focus on more advanced uh, features. So um, today I won't exactly talk about uh, GIS because um, in GIS we usually deal with features and features are geometry and attributes and uh, actually most attributes are textual data. So it's very important to uh, be able to handle this uh, textual data. Uh, so I will focus today on some text search uh, capabilities in, in PostgreSQL. I will use a data set which is a, a list of addresses in Drum, that's a part of France. And uh, in this data set you have points and uh, according, uh, in the attributes you will find uh, the name of the commune, the, the city, the name of the street, etc., etc., which we will uh, use for a text search. So we present you some lesser known PostgreSQL jewels, so very, some hidden features. Uh, I'll start with standard pattern matching, which you probably already know, uh, then fuzzy matching, three grams, full text search, and a bit of collations. So let's start with uh, standard pattern matching. This is something you probably already use, uh, that's a like keyword in SQL. Uh, you also have the operator, which is two tilde. Uh, and it's used for pattern matching, just like in the query uh, you see. Uh, you can say select all the um, uh, communes from uh, our data sets where, uh, begin, where the, the name of the commune, the name of the city begins with B. And uh, you have a few uh, specific characters to match any single character or any zero or more characters. So that's pretty convenient. Uh, you have also the I like variation, which is case insensitive, and you can reverse the search uh, with not, uh, just like any uh, standard SQL expression. Just be careful with indexing. Uh, you, uh, if you use a reverse search, for example, um, uh, any character and then a B, for example, it won't be indexed by standard indexes, so you will have to use uh, a few different things. Uh, there is also this similar to keyword, which is less known. Uh, it's a regex pattern matching, which is a bit specific because it's a SQL standard definition of regular expression. Uh, so it's not POSIX, so it's not compatible with uh, what you are used to use as a regular expression outside of uh, PostgreSQL. Um, but you can use it as well, so you have a few uh, different uh, characters which you can use uh, to define a regular expression to search for. Then you have the classic regular expression uh, pattern matching, which is a tilde operator, and uh, that's used for uh, pretty advanced regular expression search. You can uh, use all POSIX capabilities of regular expressions, and the tilde operator returns true if the text matches. So uh, you can just uh, use it in your where clause, and uh, it will send you back uh, the same uh, results. Uh, matching the, the regular expression. You have also some other operators for uh, case insensitivity or not matching or not matching and case insensitivity. Uh, same limitations as for like, uh, be careful with uh, indexes uh, because uh, your queries with regular expression cannot be indexed by, def indexed by default, but we'll see that uh, we have some uh, specific index we can use using three grams. So let's go to some more advanced uh, PostgreSQL uh, text matching with fuzzy matching. So there is this extension in PostgreSQL which is called fuzzy string match, uh, fuzzy string match, it's unpronounceable, uh, which provides you with a few uh, specific uh, functions that helps to um, find some text in uh, a corpus. Uh, first of all, you have the Levenstein distance. You have the definition of the Levenstein distance. It's a bit complicated written like that, but that's basically how much character you have to change to go from one string to another uh, by inserting or deleting uh, some, some characters. For example, if we select the Levenstein distance between Firenze and Firenze, uh, it's just one liter difference, so the distance is one. Um, between Firenze and Florence, the uh, distance is three, uh, so uh, you, can, uh, dis uh, you can determine uh, the, a kind of similarity between uh, two words or two expressions. There's no indexing possible with this uh, function, so uh, you have to combine it with uh, other uh, search uh, or matching functions. Another function for uh, matching is soundex. 
Sondex, it's in the same uh, extension, and it gives you the similarity of English text um, for uh, it actually converts a text to uh, a four character code, which you can use to compare different words. Um, there is also the different function, uh, which gives you the amount of uh, codes, characters, which are common between uh, two different words. It's specific to English text, so it, it works well with English text, and um, you can use indexing using expression index. You can, uh, you can say uh, index using soundex uh, on my column. For example, the soundex for Florence, you can see it's, four, uh, it's F465, and the soundex for uh, Firenze, it's 4652. So it's, uh, it's different, but for Firenze, you got the same soundex. So if you compare the soundex, you, can, you will have the same value for Firenze and Firenze, and you can match uh, both, um, both words. Uh, metaphone and double metaphone are two other uh, sound similarity functions. Uh, it's the same principle as for Soundex. It's a different algorithm, uh, and uh, the the, uh, the code it uh, it gives back is a bit different. But uh, it tries to sound like uh, the original world. For example, uh, the D-metaphone code for Alexon is A L K S, and for Alex it's A L K S as well. So you can see that both words have the same D-metaphone code. So you can compare compare or search. Uh, in your uh, database for uh, Dimitri phone and it will send you back the names which are uh, which sound similar to the one you are looking for so that's pretty convenient um, also for uh, fuzzy pattern matching three grams uh, three grams are uh, given in the PGTRGM extension and the principle of three grams is a comparison uh, of text based on three liters decomposition of uh, specific words. Um, it gives you a few uh, functions, uh, namely similarity, word similarity, strict word similarity, uh, which behave a bit different when comparing. Uh, the the simple one is similarity, and it takes two string into uh, account, and it will give you um, a similarity uh, float number um, according to how much three gram of, the, of both words are similar. So you can see the decomposition in three gram, for example, uh, for the text welcome to Firenze. Uh, there are a lot of three grams, uh, space space F, space space T, space space W, space FI, space two, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the three liters uh, elements, uh, three liters items you can uh, decompose the word into. And then um, PostgreSQL with this uh, similarity function will compare this uh, three gram set and say, okay, we have uh, X amount of three grams similar, so uh, we give you the similarity score of uh, 0 0.48. So this is a very good way to um, compare text and to search uh, text for a different variation of a word or for, uh, of a phrase. And you, have, uh, you can either get the score or you can also use uh, the operators, uh, two-fold version, uh, especially the percent operator, uh, which is configured to, um, to give you true if, it's, uh, if the score is over a specific threshold, which is configurable. An example, uh, using Trigram is very good uh, for, to work with uh, typo, for example, when you, uh, you look for uh, Bordeaux, for example, which is a town in, uh, in the western part of France and not exactly in Drôme. Uh, I'm looking for uh, the place in Drôme where the, the name of the city, uh, Trigramly speaking, looks like Bordeaux, but I actually made a typo. It's not Bordeaux, it's Bordeaux, and you can see that the result gives back the right name of the commune it found, uh, which is uh, not exactly the one I was looking for, but uh, pretty similar. So it, it's very good for fixing uh, user typos. Uh, Trigram is a very good thing for that. Uh, the good thing is, uh, is also that you can index uh, Trigrams. You can index with GIST or with GIN, which are two uh, different methods of indexing for PostgreSQL. For Trigrams, uh, GIST is preferred. Uh, the only thing it is uh, that you have a limitation of, uh, on the amount of text uh, you can put in the index, but usually uh, it's enough for uh, most use cases. So you can create uh, the index using GIST and this um, uh, 
this index operator, which is gist tlgm ops, and it will create you an index on your colon uh, based on three grams. Um, the good thing is, uh, once you have this, you can uh, make a query just like the one I showed you before, and it will be accelerated by the index for uh, three gram matching with a percent operator. But the three gram index will also be able to index your queries using like, I like, and reg regular expression. So uh, sometimes uh, when you look for everything uh, uh, beginning with some characters, then uh, with O, U, R, D, E, and some characters after, that can, cannot be indexed by a standard text index, but if you create an index on three grams, it will be uh, used for this kind of search. So um, even if you don't use the three gram search, uh, the three gram indexing can be useful as well. Um, so uh, last big thing, one, uh, one other big thing in PostgreSQL is full text search. Full text search, is a big beast in PostgreSQL. It's usually not that very well known because it's pretty complex. Um, the idea is to be able to search documents of text uh, for a specific text given in a query. A document can be any text in your database. Usually you take a lot of different uh, attributes, you group them together, you concatenate them, and it gives you a, a text corpus, which is called a document, and that's what we are uh, going to uh, use for, uh, to look uh, for any text. It's a core PostgreSQL feature, so it's available everywhere. It's very flexible and customizable. I will show some uh, use cases, but not everything, because it, you can go very deep into customizing full text search. Uh, it's useful for all languages, uh, it's not only English, and the principle is that you pre-process your documents uh, for, uh, to be able to access full text search features and also for efficiency. So uh, the principle is take documents, uh, you take the documents and you uh, process them to tokens which are individual elements in your text. Uh, then you convert your tokens to lexemes, which are grammatically um, uh, single items uh, corresponding to tokens, and you use dictionaries for that. Uh, you, can, um, you can customize dictionaries, and dictionaries are used to normalize the words. For example, uh, when I say uh, a shop and shopping, for a full text search, uh, it can be the same word because it's the same lexem. Uh, so when you search for shop, it will also find shopping. Um, you can strip stop words as well. Well, you will strip stop words. There are a lot of words we, which don't actually have very uh, strong meaning, so we strip them. Uh, you can um, replace synonyms uh, with dictionaries, so that if you look for, um, for a specific word, it will find the synonyms as well in the text. There are a lot of things you can do uh, when converting the tokens into lexemes, thanks to dictionaries. So that's the second step for uh, preprocessing the, the document. And then uh, the next step is storing a specific uh, um, uh, data type for searching and also to allow for ranking. So full text search in PostgreSQL introduce mainly two different new data types, which are TS vector and TS query. TS vector is uh, the uh, global, the document converted to lexemes, and the TS query is uh, what you want to search in your text. The documents can be any generated text, and um, you can use generated columns, which are features starting from PostgreSQL 12 or 14, I don't remember, to store TS vector data because uh, you have to convert your document into a TS vector and to convert your document into TS vector, you can use uh, this function, for example, to TS vector. Um, you can say uh, it's in French, it will use French dictionaries. And here I will concatenate uh, a certain amount of attributes, the name of the city, of the commune, uh, the name of the former commune, uh, the name of the location, the alias, uh, the name of the street, and uh, also the postcode and the, um, the code for uh, the, the commune itself. And as you can see, I can also set a weight to different attributes so that different part of the text will have different importance. So uh, the communes will have uh, the importance A, which is the most important one. Uh, for example, a title in your document will have importance A, the weight A, and then you have A, B, T, D, uh, which you can define on your text so that you can determine which part of the text has most importance. 
And here I generate, uh, I have a new colon to my, um, to my table, and it's uh, generated automatically. It's stored as well, it's materialized, uh, so that I will be able to create indexes on that, and it will be fast as well. But as soon as I will add data to my drum table, it will automatically create uh, the, um, uh, the TS vector data. So that's a very convenient uh, feature from latest PostgreSQL, the generated columns. Uh, before that, we, have to use, we had to use triggers to uh, generate the column. So how do you use it? Uh, once you have generated your, um, your TS vector data, then what you have to do is create a TS query and uh, use the at, at uh, our double arrow bus text matching operator so that you can uh, query your text. So here I select everything from my addresses uh, where my generated column, uh, my TS vector, uh, match my query, and my query is uh, the, just the name Henry uh, in, French, um, in French language. So I will search for every address which has Henry somewhere uh, in the document, so somewhere in one of the attributes, which is a street name, name of the commune, etc. And it will give me back uh, the rows, and since the rows have the geometry, I can map them uh, with QGIS. Uh, I can do a heat map, for example, or kind of uh, different uh, um, uh, visualization you can have. Of course, you can use policies in combination. So here I will do a full text search plus uh, a geometry search. So I will say, OK, I'm looking for uh, everything related to uh, which have Henry in its name, but within a 10 kilometers radius around uh, Valencia. So that's standard SQL, but you can use the power of full text search and the power of PostGIS all together in a very simple query. Uh, you have a few functions for full text search, so 2TS vector to generate a document, 2TS uh, query to generate a query, and then mix them together. And then you have uh, plain two, phrase two, and web search. Um, so I'll get back to them. 2TS query, uh, the query itself to generate the query, uh, it's, a, it's a text um, uh, data, and you can use a few operators. For example, if you are, I want to search for rue or chemin, uh, street or, or, or path, I can use a, a pipe operator, which is or, I can use a uh, end operator, I have a not operator. I can say I want to followed by Henry in this order, and I can group conditions so that I can have expressions which are pretty complicated in my query, and it will look for that in the text according to the predicates you have. Um, you can also restrict the query to specific weight you have defined in your, uh, in your document, and you can say also uh, as a prefix matching, I want uh, every single text uh, starting with Henry, for example. Uh, to build more queries, you have a few other options. Plain 2TS query recombines all words of a, of a standard text, uh, which is a query with an end operator. Uh, phrase 2 uh, combined with follow 2 operator. And web search is a different syntax, like Google-like, where you can use the or or the minus uh, quoted and unquoted uh, data uh, text in your query uh, so that it feels like uh, a web search. So it's pretty convenient. You can index all that, uh, of course. Uh, we use gene index, uh, so that's very easy to index. We have index on, uh, my, um, uh, on my data using gene on uh, my generated uh, query, and you can see that uh, when you do a full text search query, it will uh, do a bitmap index scan, so it will be fast. Uh, there is also a ranking uh, features, so you can get uh, a rank uh, from your, um, your search uh, saying which result has the uh, most, uh, the best score, and the best score is, can be computed either by uh, lexem frequency or by frequency and proximity of words. So you have two functions for that. Uh, you can configure and normalize uh, and uh, configure option for normalization as well, so you can go deeper uh, into that. But uh, an example of that is that uh, if I get a score, for example, if I look for Roche, uh, there is um, uh, a common name, uh, La roche sur grand and another one, La roche de Glan. There are a lot of uh, streets name, named Roche, but this one will come first because I have, uh, um, they have more weight on the name of the commune than on the name of the street. So when I rank them, uh, I will have a commune with this Roche keyword more than uh, just tweet with the Roche keyword. So that's pretty convenient to, um, to order your, your search. 
There are a lot of other things you can do with full text search, highlighting reserves, uh, you can have custom dictionary, you can use uh, an accent for special character handling, uh, you can use it in combination with PGTRGM to fix a typo first and then look in your text. And you can even write your custom parsers for text. If you have very specific data uh, you, you want to parse, uh, you can write a parser in C and integrate that into Postgres. Uh, last but not least, uh, collations. Uh, collation is another very uh, lesser known problem. Uh, it's for text ordering. Text ordering is a pretty complex problem. Uh, for example, if you are German, you may know that uh, do, um, the, the order for the phone book is different uh, than the alphabetical order usually. And uh, that's pretty weird, but it's a, it's a rule. Um, and uh, sorting emoji. How do you sort emoji? Do you know that? Emojis are text, so you have to sort emojis in some way. Uh, how do you do that? You can do that with PostgreSQL. So, uh, what we call collatable data is everything which is text, worker, and characters. A collation is, uh, defines a sort order and character classifications as well. And you can define the collation granularity per colon or per operation. There are uh, two different libraries for uh, collation, two different sets of collation, which is one which is provided by the system, which is libc, and another one which has been implemented later on, which is ICU, which provides you with a lot, lot, lot of collation capabilities, and uh, you can have very specific collation with very specific rules. It's pretty complex, but uh, you can do what, almost whatever you want. For example, I we create a collation named Yun, uh, UNDUCOMOGXICU, so this is a, a, an ICU uh, collation, and uh, it applies to uh, the local below, and it says, uh, orders my emoji by the right order. Uh, and when I want to use a collation, I can uh, just write my query and say order by name, and I will say, you order by name, but you use a collation, uh, Deutsch, uh, I don't know, remember the ICU uh, meaning, but it say use a standard Deutsch uh, ordering. Some use cases, why do you want to do that? Uh, you want to do that for natural sorts, for example, uh, here uh, you can see that if you don't use, use an equation, uh, EM001 will be before uh, EM999, uh, uh, that's with collation, sorry, that's natural sort. Uh, so th you have uh, the numbers are ordered in the number order, but if you take only an alphabetical order below, uh, you have 0, 0, 001 coming before uh, 1000, which is, um, which is okay, but then you have EM999, uh, which comes after, which is not okay. So you can use as well uh, that for uh, diacritic character management. Uh, you, they are known in English, but uh, for Deutsch people or for Finland or even for French, uh, that's something which is always complicated. Uh, for example, S set in German is very complicated because sometimes it translates to some S's, sometimes uh, it's uh, S, S set, sometimes you have uh, an uppercase S set which exists but is never used in classic German. So that's very complicated stuff, uh, but you can do that with Postgres. And for case sensitivity as well, when you want to look for, uh, for text uh, without um, taking uh, case sensitivity into account, you can do that, but you would need a nice U extension uh, further. And last one, uh, you can sort emojis. There's actually a standard, uh, an international standard saying which other emoji has, have to be sorted, and ICU implements that, so you know, you know that happy face comes first. <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> Thank questions? you very much, Vincent, for your interesting presentation.